Today I have for you another interesting topic since I'm in the APU compartment of Airbus A320 and uh, this exact one is APS 3200 and component about which I want to talk is a fuel control unit which you can see here on the front face of the APU gearbox and it is here to supply the APU with a fuel uh, which is used in combustion chamber to power the APU and as well uh, it controls few uh, valves for which it uses uh, fuel as a hydraulic fluid it is basically the same on every engine so let's take a look at it fuel itself is delivered through this uh, Hose, which you can see over here and uh, the other end leads to the let's say left uh, left wing fuel tank from it from which it is delivered thanks to APU pump which you can find in the main wheel well uh, this this function of this pump can be supplied as well with the uh, main uh, pumps which you can find in the wing tanks uh, if you want to know how to replace it and how it works, uh, the link uh, to video will be in the description or in the top right corner. Uh, but back to this one. Uh, once it gets all the way over here, here we have a low pressure switch and uh, this is our uh, fuel control unit. The fuel control unit has, as I said before, two functions. Supply the combustion chamber, which is over here with a fuel and it also uh, controls two uh, valves which you can find on the APU one is APU bleed valve which you can find over here and uh, right behind it we need to go on the other side we have a IGV valve that one controls inlet guide vanes which you can find on the load compressor actually those paints there and uh, that is responsible actually both of these valves are responsible for providing air uh, to uh, to the airplane which means we need a bleed air for the startup of the engines or uh, we use this air also for the air conditioning system which helps to pressurize the airplane and provide uh, fresh air inside of the cabin so those two valves are controlled thanks to pressure or fuel pressure which comes from the fuel control unit which is over here this fuel is then used uh, and it is sent inside of the combustion chamber and it is burned on it you can find of course filter because we want to be sure that only clean fuel enters into the combustion chamber it is driven from the gearbox and of course on the gearbox you can find uh, all the components like starter yeah there is a, a cooler for the uh, oil cooler again separate video will be in the description uh, here you can see generator and yeah oil filters so now you know what it is what is it good for and uh, let me show you how to replace it and again I'm not gonna work on this system alone so Let's start. Bring them. And since replacement of this unit is one of the OGT tasks, uh, it will be performed by my two colleagues who are actually in OGT training process. I'll be there mostly as a supervisor. This, this section, this section, mm -hmm. this part remain together. Holy. One of them is removing all connectors and the other one is removing safety wires yeah. from the main feed okay. line. Okay. So, two connectors. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Huh? I put the condom okay. Thank you. So no, no, I'm checking for the clamp because we have to put the clamp. We need to re we need to remove the this yeah, this clamp. Yeah, this and it will stay with it. This one as well. And during yeah. the replacement, we're gonna discuss how the system works and what it is supplies. You know which pipe is for what? On it? No. Your guess? Am I, am I close? The, those two on your side, what they are good for? This two. Please search, yeah. Please what? Search. 
Bleed search. It's one one thing. What is a bleed search? It's flip. So is the bleed though? Yeah, it will de deliver or it will send overboard. Yeah, but this one I mean. Bleed search. It's, it's called bleed search. Yeah. Okay. Bleed search. Yeah. Because so it give you bleed and then it's prevent search. Because it goes there. That's yes. Overboard. Overboard. And the other two yeah. are fueling of the thing. Injected. That's yes. We good? No, one. One is going for the fuel. This uh, one. The other one. Are and you mean the third? This one? one two, uh, three. This is, That's drain. This is drain, yeah, here. Yes. Okay. It's from behind the spline. I have no. Okay. All connectors and the cables which leads to it are finally free, so we can start with the removal of the main fuel line. Now, cut, remove this. Yeah? Can I remove the pipes? Yes, you can start. And what we're actually doing at the moment, on the front face we are removing pressure switch and meanwhile on the right side we need to remove all three pipes which means pressure, return and drain line which we've been talking about before. And meanwhile I will remove the line which uh, delivers fuel to combustion chamber. And meanwhile, my colleague remove all safety wires from the pressure switch, so we can finally start to disassemble it. First, we need to remove the outer union, which actually holds the pressure switch on the inner union. And when we get enough space to move pressure switch out, we can start with the losing of inner union, thanks to which uh, the pressure switch holds on the FCU. And finally, all connections are gone, so we can start with the removal of the FCU. And it holds on the place thanks to one clamp, and it is very easy to remove it. And when every clamp is out, we just need to pull it out of the place. And sometimes it's not easy because you need to overcome resistance of the two O rings. And since all the FCU is out, we need to inspect the area behind it, which means that we need to check if there are no particles, if there is no damage, and only after that we can install the new FCU. And since everything was okay, we can install new FCU. But before that, we need to install two new O-rings, one on the drive shaft, one on the AC, and we need to, of course, lubricate it with the engine oil. Whenever that's done, we can push it on the place and again we need to overcome the resistance of the o-ring and then we just need to align the position pin on the FCU with the hole on the gearbox of the APU. When this is done we need to install the clamp which holds the FCU in position, we need to tie it, torque it with exact volume, then tap it with a plastic hammer and torque it once again. This way the clamp sits on its exact position. And meanwhile we'll install the fuel lines one, yes. one by one on the left side and on the right side and of course talk them with the exact volume. And since many of you ask in the comments, we always use 90 degrees on the craft foot to keep the torque value as it should be. Because if we use different angle between torque wrench and craft foot, we need to calculate the torque value. Uh, wait, wait, wait. What I want to check first, before we install it, we need to know this, huh? it's okay, yeah, like this. And I actually checked if the pressure switch is correctly installed on the union, because if I turn it the other way around, we'll have a problem to fit the connector on it, because the pressure switch you can install the both way and it will have no effect on the function, but as I said before, we'll have a problem with the installation of the connector. So basically, I lubricate all three o-rings, they are new. And since we know exact position, we can now install and torque the inner union. And when inner union is on the place, we can adjust the correct position of the pressure switch. Yes. And then we will tie the outer union, which will hold it exactly on the required position. Love it. Perfect. 
and now we can continue with main feed line which uh, is installed by my colleague and uh, many of you ask me if I have a manual on the side when I'm doing my job yes it is in the okay, iPad and at the moment I'm reading the yes. manual and I'm checking the torque value for the main line and as the next we will install the harness into the clamps okay. and fit it on the FCU so tight lock tight lock tight mm -hmm. tight right. tight 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 mm -hmm. we didn't touch this one it's still secured this one goes here this one goes against this and that was basically double check of every connection which we reinstalled and basically all what's remaining is to lock wire every connection which we removed and few more clamps on the pipelines and on the harness And when that's done, all that's remaining is to install all electric connectors. And when they are on the place, we need to perform the test and the bleeding procedure, which I'll show you right now. And we need to purge the fuel line, which means that we need to pressurize the fuel line. And basically that brought the fuel all the way to shuttle valve. And, uh, uh, now we need to go to APU and uh, there we're going to uh, do the uh, bleeding procedure. So let's go there. As a first we need to install drain tool on the feed line and it has exact position right in front of uh, pressure switch. This? Why do you have to do the cockpit? Before? Huh? Pressurize the lines. Meaning fuel pumps on? Yes. No. Basically all we need to do now, just press the button and until it stops coming out. And let yes. me expand this. Uh, basically ready? we need to press the button on the forward firewall which will open shuttle valve and let the fuel flow through the bleed tool into the bucket and thanks to that we know that there is no remaining air. After that we remove the tool close the APU compartment and we can move into the cockpit and try to start the APU and that's basically the main test. We don't have air. Cool. Happy? So, yes. So, so start. let me check. Uh, this is secured against this. It holds like this. Okay. Done, 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 done. Connector. Yes. This installed, installed, installed. Perfect. Tight. This we torqued. No, this we torqued, this we torqued, torque, torque, torque. Good. Closing. What do you need to do? Okay. Let's let's test it. So pumps. Off. CBs in. Now test. Master switch on. MCDO CFDS um, APU. Uh, self test. Test okay. Okay. Now, APU data and all quantity. Serial number, oil level. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, fire extinguisher. APU fire test. Two, three. Cool. Close. Start. And as you can see, APU is slowly spooling up, and we have also EGT, which means that fuel is flowing into the combustion chamber. And whenever APU is available, we'll wait for three minutes before we start to operate the lead function. A few moments later. Hell yeah. Uh, what I want to see now, uh, because this is controlled thanks to that line. Huh? The bleed valve, bleed valve open, bleed valve close. Cut close. Perfect. Let's go. Out. 
And what you can see at the moment is a leak check during uh, APU running. So we can inspect every line if there is no leak. And as you can see, there is not a single drop, which means the successful replacement. And we can switch off the APU. Okay, everything looks fine. So we can switch off the APU. This was really successful replacement. Now just, we just need to wait for cooling period and then it will shut down by itself. That's all about APU FCU. If you have any questions, as always, write them in the comments below. Uh, and also, also, as always, I would like to ask you don't use this as a replacement for your maintenance manual, but always use latest documentation released by manufacturer. Big thanks to Austrian Alliance that they let me to record all these videos for you. Uh, big thanks to each and everybody for watching my video and especially to members. That's all from my side. My name is Tomáš, this is Recar Maintenance with Zeto and I'll see you as always on next video. Bye.